Hi everyone, I'm Pardis Imami Naimi, a postdoctoral scholar at the University of Washington, and today I'm going to talk about privacy and security nutrition labels for smart devices. This is a joint effort with my PhD advisors, Lori Craner and Yuvraj Agarwal at Carnegie Mellon University. Let me start by talking about toilets. Not regular ones, but the smart ones. We have very expensive smart toilets on the market, enabled with Amazon Alexa that could light up or even better, flush for you with your voice command. We are also going to have a much smarter one that is equipped with several sensors, including cameras, that could identify you and collect your health-related information. This technology could be very useful in identifying health issues, but this would also pose a huge risk to users' privacy, especially if they're not aware of the device's practices. One scary scenario might be when your infrared diagnosis gets shared with your employer or insurance company. People are increasingly purchasing smart devices. However, despite the surge in purchasing them, consumers are concerned about the privacy and security of the smart devices they purchase. And people should be really concerned about these devices. After all, we've seen news on how easily security cameras are getting hacked. But sometimes risk could have been mitigated if users of these devices were more informed. For example, after Ring security cameras got hacked, the company emailed their millions of users to use multi-factor authentication. So maybe these devices would have not been easily hacked if the users knew about better and more secure authentication mechanisms. You may have also heard about Google putting its consumers at risk by forgetting to mention that its Nest Secure Hub had a microphone or, in other words, failing to inform consumers about the device sensors. Another example showing how currently manufacturers are not transparent about their privacy and security practices is when some smart TVs are selling out data to third parties without disclosing it, or when it got revealed that Amazon is sharing unencrypted recordings of users' voices with its employees. Therefore, in many data collection scenarios, consumers are not informed about who their data is being shared with or sold to. It is important to mention that our primary focus in all these examples was not the specific privacy and security practice of the smart device or the manufacturer. The problem that we focused on and proposed a solution for was the lack of information users have about the practices of these devices. To inform consumers, we looked for an effective way to present them with devices' privacy and security information. We designed a privacy and security label for smart devices, somewhat similar to nutrition labels for foods. What you see here is the most recent version of our label, but we did not start from here. In this talk, I will walk you through the journey of this label, how it got born, how it spent teenage years, and when it finally matured. Our design label covers various privacy and security attributes related to the smart device, including types of access control, sensor type, and who the data is being shared with and sold to. I will first talk about the initial version of our label that we designed based on the studies we conducted with crowdsourced participants to specify the privacy information that people are concerned about related to IoT data collection scenarios. I will then discuss the study we conducted with consumers of IoT devices to capture their feedback on the initial label. Being convinced about the essence of having the labels for consumers, we then interviewed and surveyed several privacy and security experts to identify the most important information that we should include on the labels. With this information, we designed the next version of the label. Finally, I will discuss how we improve the usability and effectiveness of our label by conducting studies with consumers of smart devices. Literature has identified several factors that could potentially impact people's privacy personal concerns related to IoT data collection scenarios. 
prior work has only covered a very specific subset of IoT data collection scenarios. In addition, all the prior research has looked into each piece of information individually and did not consider the potential significance of presenting the combination of the factors. We designed a large-scale online study to cover several data collection scenarios and measured nuances in users' privacy preferences and expectations by looking into the combination of various factors. Some of the factors we included in our study were type of collected data, location of data collection, and for how long the collected data is being retained. For each factor, we tested several levels. For example, for the type of collected data, we tested levels including video, audio, and biometrics. For location, we had library, home, and public restroom. And for the retention time, we tested retention up to a year, forever, or unspecified. We built statistical models to explain participants' concerns and preferences toward various data collection scenarios that we generated by combining the privacy factors that I just mentioned. Our qualitative and quantitative analysis indicated that data type, location of data collection, and retention time were among the factors that participants were significantly concerned about and that they reported that they would like to be notified about this information when engaging with such data collections. Most importantly, we found that privacy concerns are diverse and context dependent, meaning that no individual piece of information about the data collection scenario has the power to accurately predict people's level of comfort and concern with that data collection. Indeed, it is the context of data collection that is built around the combination of the factors that can best explain people's privacy preferences and concerns toward the data collections. In other words, to help people make informed decisions about data collections, we need to show this information holistically instead of focusing on a specific privacy factor. By introducing a new factor of social influence, we then explored how social cues from other people impact IoT-related privacy decision-making. Although social influence has not been studied in the context of IoT and privacy, prior work has shown that various factors could change the extent of the social influence, factors such as the level of expertise, level of agreement among the influencers, and the extent to which people agree with the influencers. To measure the importance of the level of expertise, we consider two types of influencers, friends and experts. We tested two levels of consensus, strong and weak. We also tested two types of social cues, cues which were consistent with participants' opinion and perception, and the ones which were inconsistent. With these three factors, we designed our experimental conditions. We conducted a large-scale online study and presented several hypothetical scenarios to participants. In each scenario, we described an IoT data collection. In this study, we were interested in exploring the impact of social influence on participants' privacy decision-making. To achieve this, in the experimental conditions, at the end of each scenario, we provided a social cue. For example, we said more than 85% of privacy experts allow this data collection. We did not show any social cues in the control condition. Participants' decision-making task was to specify whether they would allow or deny the described data collection. Similar to the previous study, we built statistical models to specify the significance of social influence in participants' decision-making. Our analysis showed that decisions toward allowing or denying IoT data collections could be significantly influenced by privacy experts and friends. We found that the extent of this influence depends on various factors, including how consistent the social cues are with participants' opinions and the strength of social cues. Relying on the findings of the two studies I mentioned so far, we designed the first prototype of our privacy and security label for IoT devices as shown here. We included three sections on the label, general information, privacy information, and security information. To give you a few examples of how we translated the findings of our studies to design this label, let's take a closer look. 
the first study, we found that factors such as data type, retention type, and data sharing significantly influence participants' decisions to allow or deny the data collection. Therefore, we included these factors on the label. And from the second study, we found that the social cues from experts significantly impact participants' privacy decisions. Therefore, based on that, on the label, we included a star rating from an independent privacy institute. In the studies I mentioned so far, we focused on privacy factors and did not include the security attributes. We populated the security section of the initial label by collecting a few relevant and important security factors from several IoT standards and guidelines, such as the UK Code of Practice for Consumer IoT Security and Digital Standard. To understand how consumers are currently purchasing smart devices and to capture their perceptions of our designed label, we conducted a study with IoT consumers, which I will describe next. From the literature, we already know various factors that could potentially influence consumers' purchase behavior. Some of these factors are price, brand, features, quality, and reviews. We focused on IoT-related purchase behavior and conducted an interview study with 24 consumers who had purchased at least one smart device. Almost all of our interviews reported that they would like to know about the privacy and security information of smart devices before purchasing them. We also asked them how much of a premium they are willing to pay, if any, to have this information available at the time of purchase. Almost all mentioned that they are willing to pay 10 to 30% of the base price of the device to be provided with this transparency, mostly because of the person's assurance that their privacy and security will be protected and also for peace of mind. As part of our interview study, we asked participants what factors they would care about when purchasing a smart device. What about half of the interviews brought up privacy and security before we mentioned them? The other half did not discuss privacy or security until we specifically asked them about how much they value privacy and security information before making a purchase. However, once prompted, almost all interviews reported being concerned about the privacy and security of their IoT devices, mainly due to media reports, opinions shared by their friends, or observing unexpected device behavior. For example, when Alexa is laughing out of nowhere, as a participant mentioned. This suggests that for some consumers, privacy and security are latent concerns, which could be surfaced readily if privacy and security information is made salient, for example, by appearing on a label. Most consumers are prompted to consider privacy and security information. They may incorporate it into their purchase decision process. From this study, we found that it is currently very difficult for consumers of IoT devices to find information about the privacy and security of the smart devices at the time of purchase, and that they are very excited about the idea of having privacy and security labels at the point of sale. There are several legislations, both inside the US, such as the CyberShield Act, and outside of the US, including the UK, Singapore, and Finland, that advocate for having such labels. And some even mention a few factors that should be included on these labels, but there is no specific rationale as to why some information should be included on the label or how this information should be presented on the label. And as you can see from the headlines, these proposals are primarily focused on security attributes without much attention to privacy practices. So our question here was, what should be included on an IoT privacy and security label? To capture a holistic view, we invited a diverse sample of experts from industry, academia, government, and NGOs. And to elicit their opinions on the privacy and security factors, we conducted several interviews and surveys. Experts acknowledge the value of the label in informing consumers' purchase behavior. An expert mentioned, what's good about a label is that it empowers the consumer to make a more active decision about cybersecurity rather than just being completely helpless 
as to what the security of her device might be. Someone's going to be looking out for consumers and giving the consumers this information. Experts wanted us to include 47 privacy and security attributes on the label, which is clearly too many to put on a typical product package. Therefore, we decided to design a layered label with two layers. The primary layer is the concise format of the label, which could be printed and attached to the package of the product. And then there is a QR code and a URL at the bottom that direct consumers to the secondary layer, which has more detailed information and is in an online-only format. Online format means that it can be updated as the firmware changes, which is critical, as devices get updated often. Another important reason to have this online layer is to have a way to accommodate companies updating their privacy and security practices. To assess our label's usability and information communication, we recruited IoT consumers and conducted an interview with each participant. We tested the label's risk communication and information comprehension in both non-comparative and comparative purchase process. We started with the non-comparative process and asked our participants to like, take a look at the package of the smart device with our label on and define the attributes as well as their values. We then ask them to specify the information that conveys risk to them. In the comparative scenario, participants imagine doing comparison shopping for a smart device from two different companies. We ask them to compare the labels and specify which company had implemented better privacy and security practices and why. As we expected, some of the information on the secondary layer wasn't understandable to a few consumer participants. For example, devices support some protocols. However, most participants reported that they would still like to see this information on the secondary layer to be as informed as possible when purchasing a smart device. One of our participants said, I don't know what TCP and UDP are, but it's interesting to have this here because then I could go to Reddit and ask on there what that means and what the capabilities are. Some of our consumer participants reported that our label is useful to inform both consumers and experts. A participant mentioned, labels are both for customers and experts, such as tech journalists and consumer advocacy groups. If they see something that is questionable, they will raise it in the public press or they raise it with regulatory authorities. The label is not just for the consumer, but there's another feedback process that works through experts. Based on participants' feedback, we applied further changes to the content and design of our labels, and this is the most recent version of our label. To recap, smart devices are not transparent about their privacy and security practices, and the label could be useful to provide that much of the transparency and inform consumers' purchase behavior. In this presentation, I discussed several consumer and expert studies that we conducted to design a usable and informative label. But we are not done here. In order to make a difference in participants' purchase behavior, we need you to take action. If you're an IoT manufacturer, you can be the first to adopt a label for your products. To help you in the process, we developed a tool that you can use to generate the labels. You can also help us test the labels in realistic purchase settings by participating in a pilot deployment of the label on your products. If you are a policymaker, you can push this effort by advocating for it in the regulations. Governments of countries such as UK, Finland, and Singapore are already encouraging manufacturers to have the IoT label on their products. Even in the US, we have policy reports vaguely mentioning the importance of IoT privacy and security labels. But such reports cannot be effective without being specific. We prepared an extensive taxonomy document for our label, which could be helpful in specifying the information that manufacturers should disclose on the label. Finally, if you are a consumer of IoT devices, you can put the pressure on the manufacturers by purchasing from those who are continuously transparent about their privacy and security practices. 
and demand those who are not to provide you with information about their practices. Our labels are not fighting against the manufacturers or the technology. We design the labels to advocate for responsible technology, which we believe could benefit the society as a whole. If you want to know more about the most recent version of our label or use the tools to generate the label, I encourage you to visit iotsecuritypivacy.org. And if you're interested in knowing more about how you can be a part of this effort, please feel free to contact me at parties at cs.washington.edu. I'm Pardis Emami Naini, and thank you very much for your attention.